What is going on, guys? It is Joe. I am back. We're talking about the Cats. It's no shocker to you. It's no shocker to me. We are here to talk ball about the Cats. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk ball with me. I'm going to get this out of the way pretty early on. Usually in these videos, I look at established guys that are big names in the portal and say, who's a good fit for Kansas State? This guy's a good fit. This guy's a good fit. Here's why. Here are the connections, yada, yada, yada. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I put on my scouting hat today, and I'll explain why I did this. I think one of the coolest things at the transfer portal is seeing guys that maybe you or I haven't heard of, that the casual fan hasn't heard of because they aren't the massive names in the portal, the biggest names in the portal, and seeing a coaching staff develop them into a star. Naquan Talman is the perfect example of this. Division II Chipola College, it's a, it's a Juco powerhouse, and they identified Talman. There was only Power 5 offer. It sounded like there was only you know major offer. They got a big recruiting battle done with Naquan Tomlin, and they turned him into an NBA player. Obviously, he had to go to Memphis. There's different things that, you know, kept us from seeing Quan back as a senior, but that's the type of player I'm talking about in today's video. We have a good roster. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, try to peel through the thousands of guards and try to tell you which guards are going to be good when there's 80,000 of them in the portal. Today, I looked at the one need on our team. We're lacking a center. We're lacking some big men on the court. Now, the caveat to that is that there's two names that have been linked to K-State. Obviously, one of them is off the board with Omar Ballo committing to Indiana. Cliff Amori has released kind of a 12-team cutdown list with K-State. But today, I'm not messing with all that. I'm not looking at the biggest names. I'm not looking at the sexiest names in the transfer portal. Today, we're finding some under-the-radar dudes that K-State fans should know, or even the coaching staff. So if anybody on the coaching staff is watching this, this is my coaching hat debut. Uh, this is my audition to be on the coaching staff. So if this is horrible... That's on me. This is why I don't deserve to be a coach. But I found three players that I'm stoked to talk about today. Guys that didn't go to massive colleges that aren't some giant name. But I wanted to find guys that fit the role that Naquan Talman did, where I had no idea who Quan was whatsoever, you know, prior to his time at K-State. Then he blossoms into one of your best players alongside a team that fielded two NBA players in Marquise Noel and Keontae Johnson. That's what this video is about. Who can develop into a star that we haven't ever heard of before, in theory? Before I start listing names and showing you some highlights, let me tell you this. If you like K-State Athletics, if you like the channel, consider subscribing. It does help me out immensely, and we're climbing towards 2,000. I think we're a little bit above 1880 last time I checked. So once we cross 2,000, I'm giving away a lavender quarter zip. I did it at 1,000. I'm going to do it again at 2,000. So be sure and consider subscribing to get your hands on that. Moving on from all of that, I spent all day long scouring the internet, finding the transfer portal guys, finding the different players that could be connected to K-State or what the case was. Three dudes that deserve to be mentioned on the YouTube channel. And I do want to say me playing coach for one day is nothing compared to the actual coaching staff whose lives run through the transfer portal right now. That being said, I feel pretty damn good about the work I did today. And I'm going to show you some highlights from the portal report. Once again, shout out to my guy, George over there with the portal report they do a great job for the highlights we're going to use them in today's video but let's start with the first player on my board and i'm going by class here it's not the most wanted or the least wanted. i'm not going to go in that hierarchy i'm going to talk about uh class so the first player up we're going to talk about a junior here the first big to talk about in today's video is middle tennessee state center jared coleman jones now i know what you're thinking the hyphen jones thing hasn't worked out for us very well in the past don't worry about this. Let's talk about JCJ. Now, Jared Coleman Jones, he's a six foot ten center from Middle Tennessee State. I'm going to play some highlights right now from the Portal Report. Shout out, my guys. As I'm talking about JCJ, so you can get a feel for his game while I kind of talk about it, just a minute or two of highlights so you get the idea of what type of player he is. He is a six foot ten, 240 pound junior from Middle Tennessee State. He averaged 11 points and 7.6 boards last season. And the surprising thing about JCJ, I don't know if anybody calls him that, so fair warning, but I'm rolling with it. He averaged 2.3 assists per game, which is a 19% assist rate for a big. That's a pretty damn good number when it comes to guys in the transfer portal that are passing bigs. And you can see some of the highlights in these clips of him getting to the cup, of him stepping out and shooting. Like I said, he's the most polished game of the three dudes I'm talking about. He can shoot, he can dribble, he can run in transition, he can post up, he can take people off the dribble, do whatever you need him to. And he's effective at each of those things. He's pretty dang good at all of them. But he is definitely the best shooter of the three. Not saying the other two can't shoot, but he is the most natural shooting motion. You can see him taking sideline, taking some jump shots. You can see him pulling up from three. I think his ability would translate pretty quick. Now, quick caveat. I know I talked about how these are under the radar guys. I'm not trying to convince you to say we need these guys more than we need Clifford Amore or something like that. I'm not trying to sell you on that because I know there's going to be comments saying, well, they play bad competition. It doesn't matter. It won't compare. And I know there's going to be comments like, why would we waste our time here? I'm not even acknowledging that. I'm just talking about dudes that I think could blossom into really good players at Kansas State, but people that can grow into their roles and have success at their next stop. Jared Coleman Jones is the oldest of the three players as a junior. He would come to K-State in his senior season, but would have two more years of eligibility remaining. Now let's move on to the second guy. 
Here's an interesting story. And I talk about interesting stories a lot. This is one of the most interesting things I've talked about. How about my guy, Harlan Obioa? Does that name ring a bell for any of you guys? Because that is a quick question. He is a native of Hoxie, Kansas. And in case that might be ringing any bells, the kid's a former offensive lineman. He is seven foot 280. That's a big, big man. You can see in the clips I'm tossing up here, he is a big dog. Last season played for Niagara. He's a former left tackle coming out of Hoxie. And not just a left, set, left tackle, the kid was also a three-star prospect coming out with offers to play at Arizona, Ole Miss, Iowa State, Indiana, Arizona State. That's for football, not basketball. I couldn't find a page for basketball, but he gets to wherever he ends up and he decides, hey, I'm going to focus on basketball. That's the sport I want to focus on. Harlan Obioa, I'm not going to beat around the bush. The dude is not a polished player. You know, he's still learning the game to an extent, but man, his size is legit. You cannot make up for what athleticism the kid has and what ability the kid has. And you'll see in the clips, the dude provides energy. He's an energy guy. That's what sometimes you look for with that 12-13 spot. Harlan Obioa feels like the perfect backup big for K-State. He operates in ball screens. You'd have him off ball screen with a Doug McDaniel, with C.J. Jones, you know, Day-Day Ames, any of those guys. He's really effective rolling to the basket, and he provides so much athleticism and length that you could use. But one thing that doesn't get talked about enough, because people hear that, okay, he's a left tackle, he's an offensive lineman, he's not going to make a jump to a different sport and just be fine. He is such a good understanding of leverage that there's not really anybody that can guard him one-on-one -on -one in the post. If he wants to create space, he will create space. That's the type of player he is. But last season at Niagara averaged 10.3 points and 7.8 rebounds per game. He's a stud of a player, and I think he could really develop into a good player in college basketball. Is it too much of a jump? That's going to be the question for all three of these guys. But I would like to see a floater on that. You know, give him a 12 or a 13th spot on the roster and let him work, man. Get Harlan Obioa. Bring him back home. Bring him back to Kansas State and develop him behind a guy like Clifford Amori and let him go to work as a sophomore. You know, he's got multiple years of eligibility and much, a ton of upside like you see in the clips. He'd definitely have to get in the gym with Coach Phil. I think you'd have to probably figure out the right plan for not saying he's overweight or whatever the case is, but, but if you're training to play college football, then you make the 180 college basketball. That's a whole different thing in terms of conditioning. So he would definitely have some strides to make there, but I think Harlan Obioa is a really interesting prospect to follow. And the third player I will talk about here, this is a guy that pops off the tape. All three of these guys have their own unique ability, but these are the three dudes I decided on after basically seeing what 500 different bigs in the portal. Probably not that many, but it feels like that. Jeremy Fumena, that is our next guy on the list. He is a Rhode Island center. He's six foot 11, 235 pounds. He's a freshman. He played his freshman season at Rhode Island. Now he's in the transfer portal. Last year averaged 5.3 points and 3.5 rebounds per game. Uh, he's an unranked player. The only place he had uh, in terms of an offer, and you know it's tough to say if that was an offer or a walk-on situation, was Rhode Island. Went to Rhode Island, showed off some really unique ability. Like You can see it in the clip. And I don't want to just compare every long, big, athletic guy to Naquan Tomlin, but he's got a lot of Tomlin in his game. He's the most unique of the three players we're talking about. I mean, you could probably make the case that the former offensive tackle is the most unique as a story, but the dude is the most upside of these three guys. Whatever you need him to do, he can do well at and exceed expectations. He runs in transitions. You saw it in the first three clips of this video, whatever it was, sprinting up the court. He's not fumbling the basketball when he gets him. He can step out and shoot the three. He attacks the paint. And the one thing that I kind of really cling to is when he's going down to the paint, obviously, you know, he's young, he's figuring things out still. He's got some unfinished parts of his game, but boy, his jump away fader, like he's got a nice fadeaway in a low block. Guys on the elbow, he can fade away, he can step out and do whatever you need. So I think these three guys all have a unique ability. Does that make them a starter at Kansas State? No, that it doesn't. I'm not going to sit here and try to sell you that, hey, these guys are just as good as XYZ person. I'm not going to do that. These are reserve guys you bring off the bench and you see where the upside takes them. I know this might not be the sexiest video in terms of like, oh my gosh, we're going to add a transfer from UConn. We're going to add a transfer from Michigan. We're add, you know, it's not that case. But if you look beyond just the name across the front of the chest and look at their game, this is an exciting concept. You bring any of these three guys in as a backup big. Go find somebody that's going to take up 30 to 32 minutes. Think about the possibility. You've got a dominating player that can go, what, 32 minutes. You know, you need to to find you eight minutes as a big, as a backup big. This is kind of your Jarrell Colbert replacement in its own thing, but this route might not be the way the coaching staff wants to go. I'm not going to, you know, try to mask it like we should be looking at a certain level because it's easier. What it cases. I'm not going to say that. K-State can win any recruiting battle they want. It's just about getting the right dudes on campus going from there. I don't know if this video series is going to be a hit, kind of uncovering some guys to look at that might not have much publicity, but we'll see. In K-State coaching staff, if you're seeing this, 
why not toss an offer out there? Why not keep this on a back burner of like, hey, it's August. We got one spot left. We need a backup big. Here's our guy we look at. These are the three guys we look at. Just tossing that out there. But that being said, if you don't like that idea, that is also A-OK. The coaching staff doesn't need to lower expectations. They are here to elevate. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. If you hated this video, that is A-OK too. I appreciate each and every one of you guys listening as we continue to grow the channel. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. Go Cats!